Hey everyone, so they say no Jews, no news. And what they mean by that is that when it comes to Jews, or when it comes to Israel in this case, there is a special, uh, it's a special way in which it's examined that's different from other countries and conflicts. Check out this uh, monologue from Sky News, which kind of goes through the hypocrisy of Western countries in dealing with the conflict going on in the land of Israel and uh, its fight against terror. Just one week, only one. I'd love to sit here and not have anything to point out when it comes to the blatant hypocrisy we're exposed to day in, day out when it comes to the Middle East. I'd settle for just 24 hours. But I suspect even that is too great an ask. And believe you me, the things I'm about to point out barely scratch the surface in terms of volume of material to choose from. There's thousands. So here's just a select few. The United Nations' Francesca Albanese weighed in to the death of Yahya Sinwar, describing the way he was killed by Israel as... The way that he was killed was rather inhumane. inhumane. To my mind, that is not justice. Now, this doesn't even require a rebuttal for most of us, but for those at the back who need it louder, he was the architect of October 7, the greatest loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust. And he and his mates, the terrorists, are solely responsible for every death in Israel and Gaza since. I'd love to understand how his death could have occurred any more humanely. I mean, would she have preferred they burned him alive, like his men did to innocent children last year? Should he have been raped and slaughtered, like his men did to innocent women last year? Or should they have done all of the above and then paraded his body through the streets of Tel Aviv to cheering crowds? like his men did back in Gaza last year. And speaking of the UN, what a dynamic duo we have here. Secretary General Antonio Guterres warmly shaking hands with dictator and warlord Vladimir Putin. If anyone still has even one iota of doubt regarding the lack of integrity of the United Nations, this should erase it completely. Oh, it's OK, the UN says. He told the Russian president to stop his war with Ukraine. Over a whine and a laugh, no doubt. Really looks like a body for peace condemning a warlord, doesn't it? Maybe it was on his flight home from Kazan that Guterres made time to write a letter to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, condemning his parliament's decision to ban UNRWA in three months, saying it would have devastating consequences. For who, Secretary General? The innocent Israelis UNRWA staff help murder? Well, we know that's not your concern because clearly you don't care about them. How are the hostages? Have you written a letter to Hamas as well? Maybe instead of spending that quality time with your mate Putin, you could have invested some effort into creating an aid group that provides legitimate life-saving services rather than slaughters. The ABC weighed in, their guest with a predictable take. Israel has to wake up and smell the coffee because it's very clear that there are moves by Palestinian civil society groups who are very active in New York now to have Israel expelled from the United Nations General Assembly uh, through the credentialing process. And that's a rather complicated, arcane process. But basically, as happened to apartheid South Africa 50 years ago, there are serious moves afoot to have Israel expelled from the United Nations. Now, you know, and think through the consequence of that. Yeah, good point. What would the consequences of that be for Israel? I mean, the UN has been such a staunch supporter of the only democratic nation in the Middle East. How will those still captive in Gaza survive with all the welfare checks without them? Oh, that's right. There's been none. And I'm surprised Antonio Guterres has the time to attend events, given the state of the world at the moment. Whatever he's purportedly doing for humanity is clearly failing miserably. It's been a big week for horrific human rights abuses, hasn't it? Whilst he was hobnobbing with dictators, Afghanistan was banning women from hearing the sounds of other women's voices. The Islamic regime in Iran was vowing to triple its defence spend, and we all know what that means, in between announcing the execution of activist Jamshid Chamad, who stood tall and bravely denounced their evil ways. In Sudan, multiple women took their lives after being raped by paramilitary fighters, those who weren't murdered straight afterwards, of course. 
Oh, and those who are fighting their trauma and holding on to survive, well, they're expected to starve to death soon. Millions, they say. Turkey bombed Syria, killing civilians. Mobs in Bangladesh are violently attacking Hindus and Christians. I could go on and on. So now let's go to all the world leaders calling for ceasefires. You know, like they do for Israel, the victim of a terror attack trying to rescue its hostages and neutralise the threat. So if they demand it from Israel, then surely they'd be doing that and more for the actual aggressors, you know, the terrorists. OK, so let's instead go to vision of the mass protests around the world because it couldn't get any more dire, could it? I mean, people in the West will pick up a placard and demand heads roll if a man dares ask a girl out on a date at work. So surely millions are marching for justice, peace and freedom for all the oppressed. Nothing? No? Oh, no, wait, here we go. We found a protest this week. Surely it's against the Islamic regime's killing or Afghanistan's erasure of women or rape in Sudan? Of course not. It was at a Jewish community centre in London, where innocent civilians, many of them elderly, were yelled at, threatened and reduced to tears. Disgraceful. And those apparent human rights activists who weren't there, well, they were super busy launching a mass boycott of Israeli publishers, of course. Refusing complicity in Israel's literary institutions, they say. You could not make this stuff up. The regime in Iran is executing innocent people and their focus is on Jews who attend community groups and write books. And just on that, by the way, a little side note, boycotts and the like, cancel culture, vile campaigns to ruin people's lives because of their religion. They only work if we let them. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, I know, but there are so many more good people in the world than bad. Don't ever let the bad people win. Like this bottle shop in Melbourne, ready to close its doors after months of anti-Semitic attacks and relentless bullying. Yes, my business is quiet. It's dying. Been here 10 years. So thank you, the Greens. Thank you, the extreme left, hateful, hateful, Jew-hating people. You've won. I'm done. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. But then this happened, and they weren't just Jewish either. Australians from all walks of life rallied together. They came in the hundreds. Now, this stuff only works if we let it. They are powerless if we don't, if we cave in and we buckle. So refuse to. The same useful idiots who I just showed you abusing innocent elderly Jews are the ones behind all of those campaigns. The same ones who wave the flags of Hamas and Hezbollah, mourn the loss of Sinwar and Nasrallah, but turn the most convenient of blind eyes to the horrors that surround us in many, many other parts of the world. It is so obvious that they stand for nothing, let alone human rights. But still, Western world leaders look to appease them. Them! Not the silent majority, not the masses of us who actually understand that defeating terror is the only way all children in the Middle East will ever have the peace they desperately deserve. And until they find the courage, and it shouldn't even take courage, but until they find whatever it is they need, our leaders I'm talking about, to not only call it out, but to call their bluff, will continue to fail not just our own people, but the ones at the cold face of terror. And the longer they leave it, the closer this evil gets to our home. Make no mistake about it. And I can assure you the dangerous frauds who chant intifada on Western streets safely might change their tune pretty quickly if the regime they worship and idolise actually set up shop in their own backyard. 
And that's a terrifying prospect that's becoming more and more likely by the day. So um, this was really well done. I think it really lays out uh, just that week's hypocrisy of the Western world in response to Israel and the situation uh, going on over there. But I do also like the fact that she highlighted one uh, concept that I think we need to always understand, and that is that there are many more good people in the world than there are not good people. And so bad ideas and evil ideologies only triumph when we allow them to. And I'm really happy that she shared that story with the gentleman who had been in business for 10 years and then was losing everything and how uh, people came to, to his aid and started buying from him once they figured out what was going on. So there is, uh, there, there is a tremendous amount of good in the world. Let's never forget that. And let's be the light bearers that add the good to the world that, that champion these causes and then the darkness can go away in speedy, uh, in speedy time.